suspense. Autolite and its 96,000 dealers present transcribed Mr. Dick Powell in Slow Burn, a suspense play produced and edited by William Spear. Fill her up, sir? Please do, my personable peddler of petroleum. How about your battery? My lad, I've got an Autolite Stay Full battery, the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. An Autolite Stay Full battery? Say! Say no more, my good fellow, for when you've said Autolite Stay Full battery, you've said the ultimate. This demon deliverer of starting stamina has over three times as much liquid reserve above the plates as batteries without Stay Full features. You sound like Harlow Wilcox. I sound like every motorist in modern memory who's been moved to murderous fury by one of the major causes of battery failure, namely a thirsty battery, but who has discovered the delight of the Autolite Stay Full battery. A battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Sure, but you still sound like Harlow Wilcox to me. Well, by a curious coincidence, that couldn't happen again in a thousand years. I am Harlow Wilcox. Well, why didn't you say so? Because right now I'm too busy saying you're always right with Autolite. And now, with slow burn and with the performance of Dick Powell, Autolite hopes once again to keep you in suspense. I'm standing here staring at a clock on a dresser in a crummy hotel room. I've been watching the minute hand drag itself up the face of the clock, and I'm not going to pull my eyes away from that minute hand until it touches 12. Because at 12, the slow burn that started in my insides way back three months ago, the slow burn that built till my whole body was on fire is going to be soothed. Yeah, in another few seconds, it's going to be 12 midnight, and I'll be able to breathe again. Then they can come get me. I won't care. There it is. I can make that call now. Morning, Harold. Let me speak to Todd Sloan. Sports Department, Todd Sloan speaking. This is Johnny Wilson. Johnny? Don't Mark. interrupt. This call is a sense to be traced. I got a lot to say. The cops have a tight circle around. Got no exit. But before they get me, I want to clear a few things up. Now listen to me. I did it. I'm not denying it. I'm telling you why I did it. You're going to print it because you're a right guy. Oh, Johnny, I... Shut up. I don't have much time. It all started the day I fought in Duval, Pennsylvania. Dania, my wife, didn't want me to fight. But to me, it was the fastest way to make a buck. I was just beginning then, right after the war. And the cold town was the best I could do. I was fighting Tony Tadro, a good boxer and a puncher. And the second round was just squared off, and the crowd pulled to its feet, roaring the guy's name. Not mine, not Tony. Me, it didn't throw, but Tony, it did. He dropped his guy just long enough. Tony was flapping his back out cold. I let the referee raise my mitt. Then I walked to Lefty Wilkins, my manager. <laughs> nice work, Johnny. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Lefty. What was you shouting about? Ain't you heard? The hometown kid who won that Medal of Honor blew into town today. Not only that, he blew into the arena just before you tagged Tony. Well, I'd have glad to have the kid myself then. He made it easy for me. Ah, uh, you don't have time. We're to meet Courtney Barr at the club tree and on in 30 minutes. Okay, okay. And uh, just this once, let your tongue lay flat inside your face. I'll do the talk. Okay, I said. Okay. I am not you saw Johnny fight tonight, Mr. Barr. He's good. It takes more than good these days. We know that, Mr. Barr. That's why I asked you when. All we need for him is the right build-up and the connection. Now, look, when I enter the shore and I talk about a fighter, I want a reasonable chance to get my money back. Lefty, you never brought a fighter into the dock yet. But this time it's different. Johnny Wilson is the next champ. Oh, don't beg him, Lefty. If he's too blind to recognize a good thing when it's shoved in front of him, let him get a seeing eye dog. Oh, I'd take a chance on Johnny if he had an exploitation angle. The way it is now, there's too many good boys bouncing around. Don't need the build up or have to go into here. No. I'm returning to New York tonight. 
Goodbye, gentlemen. Eh, he's got nothing. Nothing but money. Someday I'm going to walk into a bank and look at the stuff. You know they keep the trap behind little cages? Uh-oh, there's that kid again. The metal boy. Name's Chuck Masters. They say he got 30 jabs. 30 jabs? Ah, oh, I'd like to meet the hero. And it looks like maybe you will. He's coming right at us. Yeah, pardon me, but aren't you Johnny Wilson? Yeah, that's right. Oh, I got to the stadium just in time for the knockout. Sure like to congratulate you. Oh, thanks, thanks. 30 jabs, huh? You've been pretty busy. Me, I was in the medical corps, Walter Reed Hospital. Have a drink, Chuck? Oh, no, thanks. I can't stop. My family's waiting. I, uh, I really have a favor to ask, Mr. Wilson. I'm chairman of the Juvenile Delinquency Committee. Oh, let me offer my congratulations. Thanks. Now, if you'll offer just one more thing, your services in an exhibition. Bob. You mean a benefit? Yeah. Uh, look, Sonny, you're a nice, clean-cut American boy, and I like your style, but the only benefits I fight are for the Johnny Wilson fight. Uh, now, now, wait a minute, Johnny, wait a minute. After all, we don't want to see no kids go wrong, do we? Mm -hmm. Uh, who are you figuring on Johnny fighting? Well, nobody yet. I just got the idea. Do, uh, do you box, Chuck? Me? Well, I did a little boxing in the 39th Infantry, strictly amateur. Then it's a natural. You box, Johnny. Oh, now, wait a minute. I couldn't. Sure, box. sure you could. And you look like a wealth, too. If you get into the ring with Johnny, it's a deal. Uh, good idea. Good publicity. You don't understand. You I... can't ask a guy to fight unless you're willing yourself. Uh, especially for nothing. You do, we do. You don't, we don't. Well, okay, it's a deal. Thursday night at the stadium. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's see. What's the setup? In the ring Thursday, I want you to make him look good. I want the kid to think he's a wonder boy. I want to sign him. And then? Then I take him to Barr as my new fighter. Medal of Honor and all. Oh, Barr like that. Endorsed by Congress. Keep talking. We've got some of the exploitation angle he's talking about. And with the dough we make on Chucky Boy, we'll finance you to the title. Any more people come in, we'll have to ration the oxygen. That's what bar means by exploitation. That Medal of Honor drags them in. There it is. Remember, Johnny, don't win. You don't have to lose, but don't win. Well, it was a fair enough fight. Like Lefty wanted, I didn't lose it, I didn't win it. The kid was a cinch to sign. A Lefty wired bar to find out if he was interested. He was, and now we're in New York in the Copa Club, signing the contracts. There's one thing, Lefty. Now that Chuck is signed, where does Johnny have fit in? Oh, Johnny's going to stop boxing for a while. He's going to groom Chuck. Me? I wasn't having any conversations just then. I was watching Chuck watch a long-haired, slinky dame come <laughs> towards our table. She had on a gown that had no straps and didn't need any. There was sweet rhythm in her walk, and she wore a hands-off look that beat blood into a guy's head. She stopped at our table, and Chuck's mouth flopped open. I said, well, gentlemen, this is my wife. Hello. Danya, this is Chuck Masters. Sit down, baby. So you're the new fighter. Yeah. I hate fighters. Oh, you're frightened, the boy. And I hate the parasites who live on. No, oh, have a drink, baby. Why do you take that, Johnny? Shut up. Hey, new fighter. Why don't you duck out before they knock that gentle look out of your eyes? I don't want to fight, Mrs. Wilson, but I need money. Johnny looked like you when he first started. And after only 4,000 push-ups a day, look at me now. Childhood sweetheart. Sweetness and light. Now he's not happy unless I wear gowns like this. There's nothing wrong with that dress. Hey, uh, hey baby, have you heard? I'm going to stay out of the ring for a bit. I'm going to teach Chuck here a thing or two. Who can tell? With me behind him, he may get to be our next champ. You've given it up, Johnny. What happened? He's just taking a rest, Daniel. That make you sore? Not me. It just sounds like Johnny's using his head. <laughs> and that sounds so strange, it makes me suspicious. Ah, oh, great little kidder, ain't you, Chuck? Hey, Mr. Barr. Come on, baby, let's dance. <laughs> now the publicity build-up started. Chuck was a hero. The story of the signing hit the papers coast to coast, border to border. The Fighting Marine. They traced his medals to every beachhead. 
I even came in for some publicity as Chuck's best friend, the guy who was sidetracking his own career to training. And on the day Chuck signed for his first fight with Whitey Carnes in the Bronx Coliseum, it was, who should come in to give him his medical but my old CO from the Med Corps, Doc Peterson. Hey, Corporal Johnny Wilson. Well, don't make me say what are you doing here. <laughs> Tell me. Well, I'm a fighter, Captain. Well, well. That's a far cry from Walter Reed Hospital, huh, Johnny? <laughs> well, how you doing? Uh, so far, the Army paid off better. No, uh, Doc, this is Chuck Masters. Oh, hiya, Chuck. Say, hey, according to all the publicity I hear, you're going to be the next welder champ. Yeah. With bars of money, we opened a training camp in Berkshire. I taught Chuck to box and learned fast. His left wasn't too good, but his right was okay, and he was shifty. Three days before his fight with Carnes, Chuck and me were in the ring, sparring. Hold it, Johnny. There's Anya. Hello, Anya. Hiya, chump. Oh, well, baby, I don't expect All right, all right, what are we waiting for? Oh, it's you, huh? Hello, Lefty. Training camps is no places for dames, you know that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You never watched me train before. What's the magnet? I got the day off, and I wanted to watch the process whereby they turn a guy like him into a guy like you. I looked at her lips while she was talking, and the thought that she might be hoping for somebody else's lips on hers, Chuck's and maybe tore at my inside. The gong sounded, and I went for it. Take it easy. Take it easy. Cut it out. Cut it out, Johnny. Cut it out. What's come out of it, you? You're nuts. Why are you sucking like that? Well, I figured Chuck is about ready for anything. Come on, Chucky boy. Put him up. Let's oh. see if you can take it. Johnny, take it easy. Oh, I really cut loose there. I've been storing it for a long time. I've felt it in good. He went down and stayed there. When they carried him out, he opened his eyes. But he didn't look at me. He looked at Dania. And she looked back at him with tears in her eyes. I should have killed them both then. Autolite is bringing you Dick Powell in Slow Burn. Tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Full now, Mr. Wilcox. Let's see. Six tenths of a gallon, that'll be 14 cents. Ah, now there's a car for economy. Like that Autolite stay full battery, it really gives you a long run for your money. Why, did you know that in tests conducted according to SAE life cycle standards, Autolite stay full batteries gave 70% longer average life than batteries without stay full features? Sure did. Oh. Well, did you know that Autolite stay full batteries have fiberglass retaining mats at every positive plate? To hold the power-producing material in place? Oh, I sure did, Mr. Wilcox. Oh. Well, did you know that this powerful pusher offer of pulsating pistons has more than three times as much liquid reserve above the plates as batteries without stateful features? Sure. That's why it needs water only three times a year, normal car use. That does it. Give me that gas pump. From now on, you can sell Autolite Stay Full batteries, and I'll sell gas. Oh, but Mr. Wilcox, don't you see? I couldn't give you a wrong answer. Why not? Because you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage our star, Dick Powell, in Slow Burn, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Still on the phone, Todd? Yeah. Well, hold it a second. I want to gander out the window. The cops in large numbers, Todd, but they won't find me for a while, and I only need a little more time to finish. Well, Chuck won his first fight, naturally. He was getting the slow, careful build-up. Won a second fight over in Jersey. So then Lefty began to book him. He said, Courtney Barr, I wanted Chuck to go out and make a tour, get a list of knockouts, so he'd have a record. So I sat on my nest. The day Chuck got back from his tour, he called, and Daniel invited him to dinner. How was the tour, Chuck? Oh, fine. I had a couple of fights that were terrific. In Denver, I fought Willie Myers. What a boxer. But I found his weakness. See, when he was getting set to throw his right, he always flipped his elbow just a bit. From then on, he was my meat. 
You're beginning to enjoy fighting, Chuck. Well, why shouldn't he enjoy it? There's money in it. Sure. 50% of the purse and a bonus. Don't forget the bonus. Scrambled brains, cauliflower ears, and a nose smattered all over your face. A good fighter keeps his nose straight. Johnny was just like Chuck when he first started. Fighting killed the man's better instinct. I'll get the dessert. Yeah, I'll help you. So I got no instincts. I'm just a bum, huh? Cut the pie, Johnny. Oh, give me the knife. I'm not worth anything, huh? I stay with you because I'm trying to salvage what I think is still there. And that quack that I used to be like Chuck is Johnny, now. we can still save it. I want it to be the way it was. You can stay away from him. What's the use? Come and finish your dinner. You heard me. Stay away from Chuck or I'll finish him. Every sports writer was wondering who was going to fight Mike Gruen. Nobody got a crack at the champ unless he fought Gruen first. I knew who it was going to be. Me. And with the money left, he got out of Chuck's fights. That was the deal we'd made. But, well, I was getting itchy about it. All this time, I wasn't getting any particular build-up. We were on the lake cruising around, relaxing after two weeks of hard training. Bar and Chuck were watching a kid horsing around doing handstands in a canoe. I took Lefty to the other end of the launch. Yeah? Yeah, look, Lefty. I know, Johnny, I know. Now, don't worry about the Gruen box. Maybe it would be smarter, Lefty, if you gave up my contract on the surface. Then you could hold off Chuck while my new manager signed me for that match. I... I can't, Johnny. Oh, why not? Now, now, don't get mad. But I had to give Barr 50% of your contract or he wouldn't back Chuck originally. But I got it fixed. Well, you dumb... Get back there! Stupid... I spun around and saw a canoe floating bottoms up. Chuck was ripping off his clothes, but I got out of mine fast, too. Me and Chuck hit the water together. You see him, Johnny? Uh, no. I saw the kid, but I wasn't telling Chuck. He'd come up about 20 yards away, and he went down to the same spot. Him, this Johnny? was going to be pumpless for me. I dove for the kid, grabbed his hair, and pulled him up. When the boat came up alongside, Lefty hauled him in. On, when they pulled me into the boat, I saw Lefty point to the landing. Oh, look at that carload of reporters that just drove up. Chuck, you and Johnny get all of those wet clothes. I'll take care of the reporters. Reporters? Well, send them along, boys. Photographers, bring them on. That evening, I was sparring with Chuck, sharpening his footwork, when Dania came up with the New York papers. Don't you two ever get out of that ring? Oh, and by the way, congratulations. Huh? Oh, you hear all about the hero stuff on the lake? Yeah. Congratulations. But she wasn't looking at me. She was looking at Chuck. I hopped out of the ring, grabbed the newspapers out of her hand. The story was there, all right, in big block headlines. Chuck Masters saves boy from drowning. Medal of Honor winner does it again. Me? I wasn't even in the comic section. Oh, this is all wrong, Danya. Johnny saved that kid. Yeah, Johnny saved that kid. Now Johnny's going to save himself. Where's that lefty Wilson? Oh, that's a dirty trick, Johnny. Chuck, you're trying to tell me you knew nothing of this. Your picture and life history on the front page. I swear. Now I... your eyes open, Johnny. Look what they've done to Chuck. Had they made him lie just for the sake of publicity. I didn't lie. And, and what publicity? Your fight with Mike Gruen. On the sports page. The whole double cross opened up like a filthy sunflower. I was the patsy, the poor guy, the jerk, the dummy. I was going to be the next champ. Yeah, the next champ under the dunce cap. I wanted to pound someone, something, anything. My eyes focused on Daniel. I'm glad this has happened. Maybe, Johnny, now you'll give up. We'll have a chance to live decent, normal life. I'm glad this has happened. I spark plugged this whole thing so I could get that growing bout. I fixed it. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Shut up! Huh? You hit me. You miserable skunk. Come back here. Let her alone. Oh, I've been waiting for this, Chucky boy. Uh, Take it easy. Wait a minute. Oh, shut up. Take it, boy. Come on. Take it easy. All right, now. Throw Wilson off the ground. Yeah. Yeah, throw that by my mouth. Oh, no. Get out of here. While they were doing it, I was thinking I was going to kill Lefty Wilkins. That was definite. 
And I remember that all Daniel worried about was Chuck. Chuck's character. Chuck's gentle look. Yeah. I was going to kill Lefty. And for Chucky boy, I was going to think of something special. Very special. Day after day, I'd wake up with a new idea. But none good enough. Then one night, I walked into a bar and saw someone. Someone who was going to give me the answer. It was my old CO, Doc Peterson. Corporal Johnny Wilson. Come on over. Bring a drink with you. Oh, thanks, Captain. Still medicking for the boxing commission? Yeah, 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 yeah. Still fighting? Yeah, off and on, off and on. <laughs> Glad to see you, Johnny. Hey, you're the second guy I've seen from our old outfit recently. Yeah? yeah you remember that lieutenant in the chemical corps who nearly lost his eyes? I saw him. <laughs> I met his new wife. A real mess. <laughs> I guess we didn't do such a good job on his eyes. Eyes? What do you mean, Captain? You remember the fool got by a chloride of mercury in him. Severe corneal laceration. Uh-huh. Lucky thing we caught him when we did, or he'd have gone permanently blind. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's a terrible thing when a man loses his eyesight. Yeah. Suppose there was a man in your profession, huh, Johnny? Huh? Yeah, yeah. A uh, good thing a guy can tell when that stuff gets in his eyes. And a guy can always tell. Burns like mad. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I guess it would. Well, I gotta be on my way, Johnny. Uh, Captain, how long would that stuff have to be in a guy's eyes to blind him permanently? Oh, 26 hours about, if he's in top condition. The captain left, and me, I walked the streets all night, most of the next morning until the 42nd Street Library opened. I went through five medical books before I found what I wanted. Eye anesthesia. Pontiki. Causes loss of sensation in the eye without affecting the eyesight. I went up to the training camp. The growing bout was in three days. I had to get back in favor. I piled it on good. I played it with hearts and flowers. Everything. Sincerely sorry. That's that's the way it is, Chuck. I, I'm sorry for the hassle I caused. I, I'd sure like to be with you for the night of the fight. Well, okay, Johnny. It'd be funny fighting a local match without you in my corner. Sounds fishy to me. You ain't the kind to forgive. Well, it ain't fishy, Lefty. Since Daniel left, things have been lousy with me. I, I, I'm out of dough. I gotta eat. I, I need the job. He gets the job, Lefty. He writes it. He taught me everything I know. I want him in my corner. When we walked down the aisle in the garden for the ring, I had three things in my bag. A long, sharp knife for Lefty Wilkins and the pontacane and bichloride of mercury for Chucky Boy. <laughs> At the end of the fourth round, Chuck was way out in front of the Lefty was beaming all over. Well, nice going, Chuck. Uh, hey, the cinch. Then I reached for the Vaseline that every fighter has smeared over his eyebrows to keep his eyes from getting cut. I had the Vaseline loaded with Pontacane. I smeared it all around those eyes of his. Now all I had to do was wait until the Pontacane took effect. The next three rounds were a nightmare. Chuck seemed as good as ever, and Drew was weakening fast. Suppose he got knocked out before I got to my core and Chuck's eyes. Well, everything's still okay, Chuck, huh? Hey, sure must be poop, Johnny. He hit me in the eye three times that round. I didn't even feel it. Yeah, that's all. Uh, oh, come on, dummy. It's not my face. A little cold water, boy. That's round out, killer. He leaned back. I picked up a sopping sponge from the outer bucket, the one with the bichloride, and I swabbed his face and kept swabbing it while the liquid ran over his forehead and down in his eyes. And it's a sponge. He didn't even wince as the poison drained under his lids, into his eyes, and over his eyeballs. He started the eighth round strong and cocky, and pushed growing all over that ring. And then all of a sudden, it happened. He stopped and put his gloves to his eyes, trying to rub away the creeping blindness. Gruen played his page. He thought it was a trick. But as Chuck desperately hunted for him, Gruen caught wise, and he piled into Chuck. Gruen 
Brown tore his hat off. He hit Chuck with everything but the wind post. Chuck kept going down, coming up from her. Oh, it was beautiful. I picked up my bag and left the corner. On the way out, I stopped for a moment where Lefty Wilkins stepped forward, agonizing in his seat as he watched the championship go out the window. He didn't even move when I shoved a knife into his back. The crowd was screaming for the kill as I walked out. Still there, Todd? Yeah. The law's going to be in in a second. The reason I couldn't call you in time for your bulldog additions, I have to be sure the 26 hours is up. Otherwise, you could have warned Chuck and his eyesight could have been saved. I want him to stay blind. All right, grab him. Todd, take it easy. Take it easy. You can have me. I got what I wanted. Oh, you admit you killed Lefty Wilkins. Sure, and it was a pleasure. And Chuck, the champ, how does he like it? Got any jobs for fighters you can't see? Why don't you ask him? What? Hello, Johnny. Chuck. Well, I... what are you... Yes, Johnny, he can see. He's not blind. But you can't see. I don't believe it. You can't. Your old CO was at the ringside, Johnny. Doc Peterson. He knew what it was the minute it happened. He fixed up my eyes. You can't see. You can't see. You can't see. You're the one who's blind, Johnny. Suspense, presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Dick Powell. Thanks, Mr. Wilcox. Come back again. I'll do that, son. I'll be back not only for gasoline, but any time I need ignition engineer at Autolite spark plugs or any one of the more than 400 other products made by Autolite for cars, trucks, planes, and boats in 28 plants coast to coast. These include complete electrical systems used as original equipment on many makes of America's finest cars and trucks. Spark plugs, batteries, generators, coils, distributors, starting motors, bullseye seal beam headlights. All engineered to fit together perfectly, work together perfectly, because they're a perfect team. So don't accept electrical parts supposed to be as good. Ask for and insist on Autolite original factory parts at your neighborhood service station, car dealer, garage, or repair shop. Remember, you're always right with Autolite. Next Thursday for Suspense, Loretta Young will be our star. The play is called Lady Killer, and it is, as we say, a tale well calculated to keep you in Suspense. Tonight's transcribed Suspense play was produced and edited by William Spear and directed by Norman MacDonald. Music for Suspense is composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Lud Gluskin. Slow Burn is an original play for radio by Fred Freiberger. Dick Powell may currently be seen in the motion picture version of the best-selling novel, Mrs. Mike, and may be heard each week in his own radio show, Richard Diamond, Private Detective. In the coming weeks, you will hear such stars as James Mason, Ronald Reagan, and Ginger Rogers. And don't forget, next Thursday, same time, Autolite will present Suspense, starring Loretta Young. Would you intentionally weaken your country? No. So don't do it unintentionally. Don't listen to or spread rumors against any race or religion. Speak up against prejudice for unity and understanding. Strengthen America at home and abroad. Accept or reject people on their individual worth. Let's make Brotherhood Week last throughout the year. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>